When the Pharaoh allowed the Hebrews to leave, they did not take the shortest route through the land of the Philistines, as the Lord had advised against it. It's better to avoid that people facing a war could repent and go back to Egypt. And so the Lord led his people across the desert towards the Red Sea. The number of Hebrews increased as tribes joined them on their march to the Promised Land. The Lord travelled ahead of them to ease their march. During the day, he brought a vortex of clouds and at night, a pillar of fire to light their journey. A group of Hebrew knights, led by a young man called Caleb, preceded the wagons to patrol the places where the Hebrew caravans had to pass. The Israelites departed from Succoth and encamped at Etam, at the edge of the desert. <laughs> You still here? You had to accompany the elders to the tribe. Caleb, do you really want to go where Moses is taking us? We're free now. Why do we still have to walk? Let's go away. The sea's nearby. The, the, the tribes and the families that compose them go each their separate ways and us too. We are a nation. Moses brought us out of Egypt and he will lead us where God wants. If I don't stay united, now it will be the end. We have to trust our prophets. Moses and Aaron, are you talking about them? But they're only magicians. They brought us out of Egypt and now are free. <laughs> you must all obey Moses. <sighs> Shepherd, calm down. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Don't stain our freedom with blood. The Hebrews left Atam. The Lord again travelled ahead of them. During the day, he led the way with a vortex of clouds, and at night, with a pillar of fire. Sithor, what is that fire that precedes us? It's the light of God, which leads us and never abandons and us. And who did you know that from? Miriam, Aaron and Moses' sister told me. She knows it. I don't believe a woman, that's sorcery. We all know very well that Moses and Aaron are magicians. Miriam, would you let me on your wagon? Huh? Have you seen my son by chance? I've been looking for him all day and I can't find him. Where is he hidden? There he is! <laughs> He's sleeping. Shh. Allowed us to camp out of town for one day! Oh! Oh! And so the Hebrews camped for one night at Edom. to kill me, didn't you? Is this what you wanted? To stain our freedom with blood, eh? Miriam, what's happening? Wait, Phineas. Be patient for a moment and you'll see. It's a boy! A child is born in Israel. He's the first to be born free after such a long time. He's the hope of our people.
May the glory of the Lord shine on Israel. Look at the son of Eber and Noah. This child will be named Baruch, which means blessed. This is the son that Eber gave to Noah. Look at him. May the name of Jehovah be blessed forever. Hooray, Baruch! This is a good omen for the people of Israel. Play some music. We've got one more reason to celebrate. You let them go! Why did you let them leave? Now we don't have any Hebrew slaves to carry on our work. We shouldn't have let them go for any reason. You're the one who gave the Hebrews the permission to leave. Didn't you think about it? Didn't you think about our needs? It was madness, my own madness. Who will serve Egypt now? Who will build our cities and our temples? Where will we find good blacksmiths like the Hebrews? Mobilize the army, 600 wagons and 10,000 men. All the wagons that Egypt possesses, we'll reach them and bring them here enslaved in chains. Go! Forward! The entire Egyptian army made up of 600 wagons and 10,000 men, led by the pharaoh himself, gave chase to the Hebrews. Never before had such a majestic army been assembled. The horses' hooves pounded the earth so fiercely that a thick cloud of dust arose. Quickly, move, move, ha! The Egyptians easily closed the gap on the marching Hebrews. The Hebrews, unaware of the danger, had left Edom to pitch camp by the sea at Piashiro, near Baal Sephon. Pharaoh's fury increased during the chase, and he was desperate to get his hands on the Hebrew slaves and to punish them severely. But one of the knights on watch, whose name was Hosea, realized the danger and gave the alarm. I saw a great Egyptian army coming towards us. There are so many, so many. The Pharaoh leads them. What will we do now? Let them trap us like stupid rabbits? We must run away before the Egyptians get here. You're too fearful. We must face them. Stupid! Moses dragged us into a trap. We've got to get out before it's too late. Don't you want to fight? Don't you want to fight? Then go back to them. Go to them. They're there. Go! Uh, uh, but we will fight. God has freed us from slavery. We will honor our covenant with him, and we won't allow it to be broken because of your cowardice. Quickly! Move! Move! Ha! I'll catch you, Moses. I'll catch you even if I have to chase you for a year! Ha! Look, my lord, the Hebrews are camping down there. It'll be very easy to get them. Ah, so they are trapped. Then they will finally understand who's in command. Do not be afraid, because the great Jehovah will never allow us to be enslaved again. Moses, and if our God has forgotten us, how do we know this is not the case? Who can tell us if this might not be so? Why did you bring us to die in the middle of the wilderness? If death is our destiny, it was better for us to die in Egypt. Moses, why don't you go alone and fight against Pharaoh since you're so sure that God will help you, eh? Why don't you? You go alone, Moses. Moses. Go, go alone. alone. Go alone. 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 Hear this. I will not go because Jehovah alone. will fight for us. <sighs> and the Egyptians you saw today, you will never see again. You must trust the Lord. He always protected us and he will protect us again. The Lord will defend us and he will let our enemies die. Moses, why did you say those words? I said those words because I know they will die. 
Come kneel before me, Hosea. With me you defended the Lord of Israel. Hosea, son of Nun, your name means salvation. From now on, for your faith, you will be called Joshua, which means God is salvation. Moses! Moses! How will you save us? How will you save our people? Lord, tell me. Lord, your servant is listening to you. Order my people to keep going. Our Lord, where are you taking us? To the promised land, Moses. The promised land. And how will we reach it, my Lord? How will we do it? When you get to the sea, lift your staff. The water will divide. And the children of Israel will be able to walk on the ground. The Egyptians will follow them. Then they'll know that I am the Lord. We will attack them. We will push them towards the sea. They will have to surrender and return as our slaves if they don't want to drown. Let us go onwards! Move! Move! Ah! Forward! Forward! Run faster! I'll find you, you fiends! I'll get you and you will see! The Hebrews, pursued by the Pharaoh and his troops, marched towards the sea, as Moses had told them. The vortex of clouds sent by God indicated the path to take. Suddenly, the vortex of clouds opened, and an angel of the Lord appeared to the astonished Hebrews. Come on, the angel of the Lord is with us! Trust in your Lord. Trust in your Lord. All of a sudden, thick black clouds blocked the Pharaoh's path, causing chaos in the Egyptian ranks. This is a miracle of those accursed magicians. The Egyptian horses were afraid of the black clouds and panicked, dragging the knights over the edge of the cliff and into the sea. Moses and the elders on a high cliff watched the events. Moses said, My lord, I lifted your staff as you commanded me. At these words, the sea began to rise and bubble, and a strong eastern wind blew too. Moses could see now the real power of the Lord's hand. The elders too watched astonished. Moses closed his eyes and prayed in his heart. Meanwhile, the sea rose and groaned like a wounded animal. The rough waves divided and rose as if a hand was moving them. It was the hand of the Lord that continued his work for the salvation of his people. It took all night for the waters to part perfectly forming two huge, transparent walls. But it happened. A miracle. Moses opened his eyes, witnessed the miracle, thanked the Lord, and said, In the name of the Lord, people of Israel, proceed towards the Promised Land, towards freedom in the name of the Almighty. And the children of Israel rushed through the passage with its transparent walls. They were afraid that the roaring walls of water would drown them. Forward! May the Lord allow us to pass in time! Hurry! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry up! Hurry! Hurry up! Don't stop! We must be quick! Forward! They're on our heels! Oh! Look, Miriam! Look at the little fishes! <laughs> the 
Hebrews were frightened that the water of the sea would crash down upon them at any moment, and they worried too about the angry Pharaoh and his troops, so they ran through towards salvation, the end of the passage. When Moses and all the other Hebrews were out of danger, they watched from a high vantage point the approaching Pharaoh. Then they were struck dumb. Pharaoh, followed by his troops, ran at full gallop, turning into the passage and its transparent walls. For the Egyptians, it was now their time of revenge. All the wagons ran at full speed, and the distance that separated them from their former Hebrew slaves grew ever shorter. Moses and the Hebrews watched their impending arrival. Moses watched calmly as the Egyptians drew ever closer. He seemed to be waiting. Moses stretched his hand over the sea, and as the morning came, the sea regained its power. The waters crashed down with a roar, engulfing the wagons, knights, and the rest of the Pharaoh's army that had entered the passage in pursuit of the Israelites. The Egyptians were powerless against the sea's fury and were swept to their deaths. You cowards! of the sea swallowed the Pharaoh, and the Lord's wrath drowned every last Egyptian. Not one of them survived. That day, Israel saw the dead Egyptians floating in the sea, and the great power the Lord had used to destroy them. From that day, the people feared the Lord, yet trusted him and his servant Moses. Today's a day for celebration. Come with me. Come on, follow me. La, la, la. I will sing unto Jehovah, for he's highly exalted. The horse and his rider have been thrown into the sea. My strength and song is Jehovah. He's my salvation. This is my God. And the people of Israel celebrated with song and dances this, their first day of freedom. A bright new day rises for the Israelis, a peaceful, and hopeful day. Peaceful because their Egyptian persecutor had been defeated finally. Hopeful because soon, very soon, the Hebrews would reach the land that the Lord had promised to them.
the sea had brought about the Pharaoh's demise and the end of his evil reign.